Hi everybody, welcome to Boxing Time. On this channel you will learn a lot of news from the world of boxing. So here we go. The speculation surrounding Jai Opetaya's purported knockdown of Tyson Fury and sparring continues to capture the boxing headlines. Rumors suggest that the Ring Magazine cruiserweight champion dominated the WBC heavyweight champion during their training sessions in Saudi Arabia, imitating the southpaw style of Oleksandr Yusik ahead of Fury's scheduled bout on February 17th. Despite being brought in specifically for sparring, Opetaya was unexpectedly sent home by Team Fury after just five rounds. Skepticism abounds among fans, questioning the official explanation that Team Fury no longer required Opetaya's services. The notion that Opetaya, who flew 14 hours from Australia to assist Fury in training, would be dismissed after a brief stint raises eyebrows. Opetaya's co-promoters refute the sparring rumors, categorically stating that they are not true and emphasizing Opetaya's need to return home to finalize preparations for his February 17th rematch with Mary's Breedis. The duo is set to vie for the vacant IBF cruiserweight title recently stripped from Opetaya. While Opetaya and his team maintain a professional silence regarding the sparring sessions, fans speculate that the Australian fighter's aggressiveness and power may have overwhelmed Fury. Opetaya's rapid straight left hands, as witnessed in his knockout victories over Ellis Zorro and Jordan Thompson, are believed to have posed a challenge for the slower reacting Fury. The prevailing sentiment suggests that Opetaya's speed and power may have resulted in Fury being repeatedly dropped during their brief training stint. If the sparring accounts hold true, critics argue that Fury missed an opportunity by sending Opetaya home prematurely. The upcoming clash with Yusik, known for his formidable southpaw style, could pose a significant challenge for Fury, and Opetaya's skills may have been instrumental in preparing the heavyweight champion for the impending battle. Opetaya's impending clash with Mary's Breedis on February 17th promises to be a pivotal moment in the cruiserweight division. Stripped of the IBF cruiserweight title due to circumstances beyond his control, Opetaya now seeks redemption against Breedis to reclaim the coveted championship. The Australian cruiserweight boasts an impressive record of 24-0, with 19 knockouts, showcasing his ability to dispatch opponents with power and precision. Opetaya's one-punch knockout victories over Ellis Zorro and Jordan Thompson underscore his reputation as a formidable force in the cruiserweight ranks. Facing the seasoned Mary's Breedis, Opetaya anticipates a fierce battle. Breedis, a former world champion himself, presents a tough challenge with his experience and well-rounded skill set. Opetaya's camp remains focused on refining strategies to counter Breedis' strengths and secure a decisive victory. Fans are buzzing with anticipation over the prospect of Terence Crawford stepping up to the welterweight division to challenge the undefeated Tim Tsu, 24-0, 17 KOs, for the WBO junior middleweight title. While negotiations for the fight are yet to commence, Crawford's coach Bernie Davis supports the idea, and Tsu appears open to the potential matchup. If Terence Crawford moves up and for him, that would be a great fight. Mm. I would favor Crawford to win by knockout. knockout. Late knockout. Only... Special fighters in the history of boxing have won titles at 135 and won titles at 154. Roberto Duran, Cornell Whitaker, Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather, and Manny Pacquiao. The spa. No, I'm sorry. Six. Shane Mosley. Six. So Terrence Crawford will be the seventh. Trainer Steven Edwards is boldly predicting a knockout victory for Crawford, 40-0. 31 KOs against the 29-year-old Sue, asserting that Terence possesses equal punching power. This assertion might surprise some boxing enthusiasts, considering Sue's larger stature and reputation as a formidable knockout artist. The challenge lies in assessing how well Crawford will adapt to facing power punchers at 154, like Sue, as he has not encountered such a threat throughout his 16-year professional career. Crawford's victory over a depleted Errol Spence Jr. has received ample praise, but questions linger about his ability to handle the strength and punching prowess of opponents in the junior middleweight division. I got this stuff in my head, so if he can pull that off, that would be a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment, and um, he would be the seventh man in history to do it, and I would favor him to do it. I think he will win the fight. It's everything. His All mind, is, he, he, he just he operating at a master level right now, man. 
Sue is recognized as a solid puncher, although opinions vary on the extent of his knockout power. While some may not categorize him as a dynamite puncher capable of instantly knocking an opponent's head off, he is regarded as a potent force in the ring with the ability to deliver impactful blows. I think he can punch, but I don't know. Uh, I don't view him as like a brutal puncher. I view him as a very good puncher. He didn't stop Terrell Gaucher. He didn't stop Brian Mendoza. I think he's a solid puncher, but I don't view him like, I don't think he's a life taker. I don't look at him like that. I don't think he's no better puncher than Terrence. Yeah, I mean, he, I think he kind of wears you down. The potential matchup between Terrence Crawford and Tim Tzu has ignited a fervor among boxing enthusiasts. With social media platforms buzzing with discussions and speculations, fans express eagerness to witness the clash of styles between Crawford, a seasoned and undefeated champion, and Tzu, the rising star with an impressive undefeated record. Opinions are divided as the boxing community debates Crawford's decision to venture into the junior middleweight division and take on the challenge posed by Tzu. Many are intrigued by the prospect of Crawford facing a strong and it as a litmus test for Crawford's versatility and adaptability in different weight classes. The bold prediction of a knockout win for Crawford by trainer Stephen Edwards has sparked further excitement and debate. Some fans applaud the confidence in Crawford's abilities, while others remain skeptical, emphasizing the uncharted territory of facing a powerful puncher like Tzu. As negotiations for the potential bout have yet to commence, the public remains on the edge of their seats, eagerly anticipating any updates or official announcements. The discussions surrounding this hypothetical matchup have added an extra layer of intrigue to the fans hungry for more details and, ultimately, Buster Showdown. Former WBA and WBC welterweight champion Keith one-time Thurman has been absent from the boxing ring for an extended period, with 717 days having passed since his last fight on February 5, 2022. Notably, there are no future bouts scheduled for Thurman on PBC on Amazon Prime, raising legitimate concerns about whether he will ever return to professional boxing. Thurman's initial rise to the summit of the welterweight division was marked by remarkable achievements. In 2015, he secured the WBA 147 pounds title, triumphing over Robert Guerrero. Subsequently, Thurman continued his winning streak by defeating Luis Calazo, Sean Porter, and Danny Garcia in his next three fights. However, this series of victories would prove to be the zenith of Thurman's career as he encountered setbacks, including injuries, weight gain, and a gradual withdrawal into a more sedentary lifestyle. The year 2019 witnessed Thurman's return to the ring, where he suffered a loss to the 40-year-old Manny Pacquiao in a fight that, with better preparation, he could potentially have won. Following this defeat and a significant financial windfall from the Pacquiao bout, Thurman's enthusiasm for staying active in the sport appeared to wane. While fellow PBC fighter Errol Spence Jr. continues to participate in high-profile matches and amass substantial earnings, Thurman has chosen to remain on the sidelines foregoing potential opportunities that could reignite his career. Despite being considered by many as a superior fighter to Spence, Thurman has not capitalized on his prime years. Spence, in contrast, recently secured a lucrative payout in his loss to Terence Crawford last July, about that Thurman could have potentially taken. Thurman's lone appearance in the last five years occurred in 2022, where he defeated Mario Barrios by a one-sided 12-round unanimous decision. Prior to this fight, Thurman had endured a 931-day hiatus since his loss to Manny Pacquiao on July 20, 2019. Regrettably, Thurman's prolonged period of inactivity and apparent reluctance to pursue competitive matches has resulted in a diminishing of his once considerable popularity. Approaching 36 years of age and with no scheduled fights on the horizon, Thurman's future in boxing remains uncertain. Speculation abounds that he may retire without an official announcement, particularly considering his absence from the spotlight and the diminishing paydays that he could have commanded during his prime years. Thurman's narrative serves as a cautionary tale about the delicate balance between enjoying the rewards of success and remaining actively competitive in the demanding world of professional boxing. subscribe please like and comment this is very important for the development of the channel see you later